All right. I, uh, I uh, wanted to let you know we had a baptism today. I think most of you all heard uh, Travis Clark. He's now in the body of Christ. He lives out, uh, what do you say, off 13 there on the Shanghai Road. Is that right? His parents live there. Okay. Well, we want to welcome him, and uh, we thank the Lord uh, that he has made such a decision. All right, I'm looking at something that I want to close here, and then I'll get started. These preachers who aren't prepared, right? Okay, I thought tonight uh, we would consider a little bit of the history here. Uh, most of you know the history of the Duckwall Church, so this isn't a uh, history lesson on that church. It just happens to be the case that it was in that building. As a matter of fact, it was... Uh, in uh, homes and buildings that existed before this, that uh, brethren came here and established this congregation in 1903. Uh, but this congregation is uh, uh, due in part to the work of those brethren. Uh, Martinsburg, is that, would I be right in saying that, Tommy? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I want you to see tonight what the seed of the kingdom can do and how it can grow. So Duckwall Church, uh, this was taken by Randy's son. Uh, is that correct? About what year was that? At least 10 years ago. 10 years ago. So uh, uh, if you go out past my house, Tommy took me there one time, and uh, we went all these back roads, and uh, I uh, decided I'd go out there one day, and I took Laura, and I went all those back roads, and it was 16 miles, <laughs> and here the thing's only two miles from my house, if that. So uh, there's the, the Duck Wall Church. Uh, now, you gave me a paper. Uh, a lady had written this. What was her name? Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, Juanita. Well, I should have been prepared. It, it, is she related to you? Is she related to you? Yeah, very good then. She was Juanita Bat. Okay. Uh, we might say Hugo's great grandfather. Is that right? And your great grandfather, or is it grandfather's? And Steve, uh, uh, Steve Weber's. Steve Weber's great grandfather. Yeah. So. Yes. What he's saying is, for the internet, uh, uh, three of the members here, uh, their their ancestors uh, were the ones that were on the committee to get this church. But this was the uh, the history that she wrote. This church was started around 1900 by James Weber a farmer who lived with his family in the community. He became a member of the Church of Christ while working temporarily in Preston County. Now, Preston County, I think, is near Morgantown. Is that right? Okay. Uh, and I couldn't find a church uh, that, uh, that they were part of. It's gone now. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. Uh, he held several gospel meetings in the Duckwall Schoolhouse with a brother Bonner and Lawrence Scott preaching. A number of persons obeyed the gospel, the congregation thus began erecting a meeting house nearby in 1903, and worship had been conducted uh, uh, here continuously since. And so the pre present membership is about 40 in number. Now, what year was that? It's been, been a while, I suppose. All right. So uh, here then again is that history. And uh, Tommy gave me this. Uh, I understand this came from Lloyd at one point. 18, 1899. You see that? Well, listen to this. This is about uh, preaching that was going on up there before the church was built. And uh, folks are upset with the baptizing that's going on. So it says, there were three persons immersed near Duckwall Schoolhouse last Saturday evening. The schoolhouse is just, just up the hill there. Uh, last Saturday evening, James Myers and wife Joseph Myers, uh, James Myers and wife and Joseph Myers, excuse me, then it says the Texan Baptist. Did you ever find out what that was about? Well, I'm going to tell you tonight, okay? The Texan Baptist seems to be in great earnest. If baptism by immersion is right and essential to salvation, what will become of us poor Protestants who do not believe that way? But no doubt what St. John said regarding baptism will bear us above the waters of this sinful world of sorrow and woe. If we live right and do right, we cannot help but die right. Uh, the next church of the United Evangelical Association at Duckwall will be dedicated sometime in November. Now, has that opinion stopped? Many people uh, just do not want to have anything to do with baptism. And if you just live a good life, they say that's fine. If you live right, then you'll die right. 
Now, in that particular article, uh, would that have been the Morgan Messenger then? Do we know? It's either one of them. There's only two papers then, one of the two. Okay, 1899. It mentioned this Texas Baptist. Now, I'll tell you exactly who that was. And it, I didn't get this together until an hour before. Laura, she knew my mind was on stuff all day long, and all of a sudden, it hit me. The Lawrence that uh, is spoken of uh, here in this section, see if I can get her here. You see Lawrence right there, Lawrence Scott. He's the Texan Baptist, all right? Now, Lawrence Scott was known to the whole brotherhood of the Churches of Christ through his books and writings. He's from, uh, uh, was born in Morgantown, West Virginia. But uh, as time went on, he uh, moved to Texas and he wanted to be a cowboy, and he ended up being a bartender out there in a saloon. And uh, he went to hear a brother preach, because to be honest with you, during that time, uh, when, the, when there was a revival in town, that was a big thing, and everybody went to him. And so he goes out there, and he hears our brethren preach, and uh, he reads the Bible, the whole Bible, starting that evening, and doesn't quit till 10 o'clock the next night. And the next morning, he goes to the saloon, and he says, I'm quitting. And the fellow said, did I do something? He said, I don't have time and you wouldn't be interested. Just know that I'm out of here. So he left there and he went out uh, uh, to uh, Brother Holbrook uh, at his farm and he walked 15 miles here to be baptized. You see that? Let's see. I walked 15 miles to be baptized. I want to be baptized. So uh, he was sick and here he says his agoos. You guys know what that word means? That is usually related to malaria or a fever that makes you tremble and shake terribly. So they said, wait till the next day. He waited a couple days shaking and trembling from this sickness. Finally, he said, I walked 15 miles, get me baptized. Notice what they did. They went out and they cut the six inch ice and baptized this fellow that was sick as a dog. So he went on. He decided then that he would go uh, by that time, he was working for a printer. He said the same thing, by the way, when he decided to be a preacher. He went in there and said, you don't have time, and I, uh, and, uh, or you don't have interest, and I don't have time. I'm quitting. So he goes to Kentucky University. Now, that Kentucky University is the one that always has such a good basketball team. That was a brotherhood college for a long time. Matter of fact, J.W. McGarvey taught down there at the University of Lexington, Kentucky. So that's where he goes, and... Uh, Brother Scott was always frail, yet he lived to be 64 years old. He was a worker. He debated. He knew different languages. He uh, 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 wrote books. As a matter of fact, he wrote a book on demon possession or on the devil. And uh, here, the Gospel Advocate, this was in 1910 when they wrote this. The Gospel Advocate said that's the only book that they know of that any of our brethren has ever written on it. And so I'd like to get a hold of that. Uh, Brother Scott had done much in the defense of the scriptures. Uh, he continues to write books. I don't know if I can do that or not. He continues to write books. And uh, it says here he spent most of his life in Texas. His labors were always fruitful. Uh, and then only a few weeks ago, which would be 1910, he, did a he delivered a lecture on Jews at the Austin uh, uh, Sabino Bible School, which is now defunct. Uh, but he had a clear mind. Uh, now, here's the part I want you to see. Before he died, this was 1910 when this was written. Just a couple years before, notice what it says here. He spent about three years lately visiting among his friends and relatives in where? Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York. No doubt it was during that time. Remember, uh, the early 1900s, he's up here and preaching. So he just happened to be back from Texas and the brothers at Duckwall got him to speak out there. And the woman in the paper said, that Texan Baptist, look what he's doing. And so it, it's to me very interesting how uh, the providence of God works. But that's, uh, that's Brother Lawrence. Uh, H. Leo Bowles wrote a book. I read this thing 20 years ago, but it comes to my mind today. Biographical Sketches of Gospel Preachers. And so uh, if you want to know things about these fellows, it's in there. Now, uh, where was our... Uh, Let's go back to that one page there. So um, notice here, when she gives the history, this is before it's a church in 1903, uh, oops, Brother Bunner is there. 
Now, Bunner, I know exactly who he was. That would be A.A. Bunner. Let me get over here to him. There he is. So Alvin's Alexander, A.A. Bunner. He was born in 1853 on Butters Ridge in Marion County. Now, I know where Marion County is. Uh, the Civil War had taken many of the available preachers. And since all the preachers were in the war, they needed preachers, and he stepped up. And notice here it says, out of necessity, he began to preach. Uh, he married Linda Monroe of Colick Run in Mannington. I've been to the church in Mannington a few times. Uh, he had 14 children, so they, were, they must have been pretty spry and uh, had a lot of patience. But he was a well-known preacher of his day. I want you to see one thing here, and if I don't hurry up, I'll be here all night. But uh, he preaches in Ohio, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Indiana. Uh, he was located at Fairmont in Johnstown, PA. That, of course, is where the flood happened, right? Uh, Pittsburgh, Graysville. Graysville was about 20 miles from my house when I grew up in Monroe County. Uh, by the way, all of these preachers had a connection to the area where I came from, the Ohio Valley. And so... Uh, I thank the Lord for the Ohio Valley, uh, especially that second generation after Campbell and Stone and those men. But in 1910, or in Monongahela County, which is Morgantown, right? Uh, he baptizes 101 people in one uh, meeting. So uh, let me move on here. He had a lot of debates. He challenged Charles Russell. You know who Charles Russell was? Charles Taz Russell who was the fellow who uh, was uh, the founder of the Jehovah Witnesses. They, I called Bruce Doherty, and he was telling me about these things. Uh, but on the Internet, it said Taz wouldn't debate him because of his intellect. So later on, uh, uh, he did debate uh, eventually with uh, L.S. White in Cincinnati. Now... One thing about him, maybe I've missed it here, but uh, let me go back. I hope you guys are being patient with me tonight. Uh, there, there's one thing I really wanted to point out. Uh, when, when he was uh, preaching, he ended up in Barrickville. Or, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, he passed away. He was li living in Cleveland. But a very important figure in church history. Now, this is him. Now, this is him with a group of preachers at McConnellsville, Ohio which is right down the road from where I grew up. And he's the fourth one from the left there. Now, this fella, very interesting guy. In 1903, the man that dedicated, yep, the man that dedicated the church building up there is this Ira Moore. He was born in uh, Tyler County. Have any of you ever been to Tyler County? There's a lot of sayings about Tyler County, but you don't want to get lost in Tyler County. Uh, he was raised in a home that had long uh, cherished the appeal of primitive Christianity. He and his brother were sort of a team. Matter of fact, they wrote papers together and did quite a bit. Uh, but the books that he had, he had Franklin Sermon, Benjamin Franklin Sermon, but not the Benjamin Franklin you're thinking of, of colonial history. Benjamin Franklin, the preacher. Uh, J.W. McGarvey, who is considered to be probably our greatest uh, uh, intellectual giant said Benjamin Franklin was the best preacher we ever had. So he had uh, two volumes of Franklin's sermons. He had a Bible and some, some little tracts and books and he just took up uh, there at this little church in Little Buffalo and became a preacher. Uh, he got a certificate. Uh, he went into school teaching and he devoted the rest of his life to teaching. He said, uh, see if I can find it here. He said that the way people are teaching kids anymore is it's like putting a tar bucket on their head and we just throw things at them and hope it sticks. So he had no patience whatsoever for the way people were teaching, especially Christian uh, uh, education. So he was linked up with uh, Daniel Somner. Have you ever heard of him? Uh, was it Lou Morrison? Uh, am, I, am I saying his name right? He was a... Yeah, Matt Morrison, right, which is Lou Morrison's son, right? He writes a book on Somner. Brother. So some of you may have that book. Well, Daniel... Yeah, Daniel Somner, he, uh, he is what you might call the first, well, uh, anti is what we would call some of them. I don't know that that's a polite term. I don't think they go by that. But he was against schools. He was against Sunday school. He thought Sunday school was a sin. 
And uh, so we'd be lumped in with all those sinners, I guess. But I guess we're doing okay right now because we don't have it. Well, that was a problem because Ira Moore wasn't having any of it. And uh, he decided he would leave. Uh, and his brother and him went back to Cincinnati where Brother Rao was publishing The Christian Leader. And he was very influential at that. But uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, so when he gets to Barrickville, I want you to notice something. The sign over the door. You see this? He gets to Barrickville. What county would Barrickville be in? It's, uh, it's down there near Freeport. Uh, yeah, so he gets to Barrickville. Look at this. His first act was to remove the sign and replace it with one reading Church of Christ. It read Christian Church. Now, I am convinced, Tommy was telling me, that that used to be Christian Church up there. And somewhere during this time, because he came back and gave meetings much longer after that, the sign was changed to Church of Christ. If I was a betting man, which I'm not, I'd put my money on the fact that he probably was very influential in that. So he goes and he preaches all over the place, Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma. Uh, but he, here's where he describes the typical fashion of study as pouring in process that was well suited for students who had memories like a tar bucket. So he, uh, to me, that's pretty funny, by the way. Uh, but he, he would go on, uh, listen to this. It, uh, such instructors were especially unequipped. Here you go. Uh, where's it at here? Up. 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 Okay. Uh, such instructors, instructors. Yeah, such instructors usually had little to pour in. It scattered so much that the student received very little instruction. Such instructors were especially unequipped to train others to teach. Instruction on how to teach coming from some people, that is preachers, is about as consistent as instructions coming from an old maid on how to raise children or recommendation of a hair restorative from a bald-headed proprietor thereof. So uh, he had some opinions on teaching, am I right? All right, this is him in a Bible class down at Barrickville. Now this was unheard of. You need to understand something. Here is an old boy from down around Fairmont, West Virginia, who is raised, he doesn't have any education, he teaches himself, he goes on to be a school teacher and a preacher, he has to start preaching by necessity, and here he is. This Bible study, which he just had in a simple church, taught the rudiments of Latin, of Greek, they went on to study systematic theology, and they did all of this. Now, I'm telling you, how long has it been since you guys studied the rudiments of Latin? <laughs> but many of these men in this picture, uh, and this is him right here, by the way. He's an older man at this time. Many of the men in this picture went on to become preachers, and I could go on at least four of them and tell you how successful they were. But their education was out of his Sunday school class in that church in Barrickville. That, to me, is pretty amazing. He comes here in 1903, dedicates that building. So... He has a, I'm missing the picture there for some reason. He has a heart, heart attack February 18th, 1938 in his home in Charleston. This is where he dedicated most of his time was Charleston. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not real familiar with the churches to this day in Charleston very much. But at that time, the only church was south of Charleston, five miles. And so he dedicated the rest of his life to uh, preaching in that city, the capital of this state. Uh, what is it? Now, is that inside of Charleston then? Well, that might have been the one then. That's probably the one. But, uh, he said the Bell Church for those listening over the Internet. Um, so he had taught his Bible class on Thursday night and was making preparations for the session on Friday evening. School was out. Teacher had gone home. So he dies. I thought it was interesting there. He taught on Thursday night. Uh, that's interesting to me. Now, here is a church directory for $1 from 1943, okay? And in this directory, there is a man that is listed, H.E. Taylor, who is preaching at Elizabeth Pike on the south side of Parkersburg, which today is the Mineral Wells congregation. Is there, and it's still there, is that right? Okay, all right. Uh, H.E. Taylor is Horace Taylor. 
And the reason he is significant to our lesson tonight is because of a sermon he preached in 1932. What happened in 1932? You guys remember? <laughs> That's when this building uh, was dedicated. 1932. He's the guy. Okay? Now, that same year, by the way, I can't remember if it was the same year or, or uh, he was very close. They had a little daughter and she died and he came up here. Uh, and so... Uh, what a rich heritage we have in this area. I think I'm done here. Is that the last one, Tom? Yeah. Okay. Don't forget our Moore came back 21 years later, and that's how she goes as an uncle out of Duck Wall 20, 21 years after he dedicated. Okay. That? So that would be what, 20? Uh, like, like, like 1923. 1924. Ira Moore comes back and baptizes. Uh, That would Margaret and Paul Myers. Now, what are they to you, Hugo? Uncle and aunt. So these guys did all this. Pre and these men had been all over the country and had a powerful work. And it just amazes me, uh, amazes me that uh, uh, Lawrence Scott, he's only going to be here for a little while, and it's during that time. Uh, those men, uh, Weber and... Uh, 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 some of those swains must have been pretty good people. I don't know. It's a nudgy wonder. Uh, but, uh, and the Myers is, what an amazing work they did. Uh, this area was bleak as far as uh, primitive Christianity, one that restores New Testament pattern. And that's where I want to leave you tonight on that. We practice what is called a restoration plea. In 1517, what is it, October 28th? Is that when Halloween is? Or uh, this, So on that day, in 1517, I think October 31st, that's it. October, Martin Luther in Wittenberg, uh, Germany, nails the 95 Thesis to the, uh, to the castle door. And it changes the whole world. There is a Protestant Reformation at that point. But... They went back to reform the Catholic Church, which was an admirable uh, exercise, no doubt. Amazing what those men went through and died uh, for. But we are simply calling people not to go back 1,500 years like they were trying to, but to go back 500 years and stop such a doctrine that claims faith only and that we are called by God through a Calvinist doctrine. What we are saying is, don't stop at 500 years ago. Keep going. Keep reaching back. Practice the primitive Christianity that Peter preached in Acts 2 when he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost who inspired this New Testament that we have, and it tells us how to be saved. Repent of our sins. Be baptized. And he will add to the church daily such as should be saved. And who was being saved? Those that repented and were baptized.